Praise the Lord. Amen. We're glad to be in the house of God tonight. Thank you so much for those that are in-house and those that are on live feed alike. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, God is good, and all the time, God is good. Amen. Uh, had an awesome week. Wonderful services Sunday. Great, wonderful time. But I'm expecting God to move in our house tonight. Amen. Uh, if you have a prayer request and you're on our live feed, be sure to text it to the number on the bottom of the screen. If you're in-house and you have a prayer request, let me know by lifting your hand. God knows each one. Let's all stand. I've been listening to them practice, and I know that we're ready to have church. Amen. I'm ready to worship God. Why? Because I know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever hope or imagine. Amen. Tonight, I know that our, our, uh, our discipleship kids and our Ignite Student Ministries, they're, they're having a little party and they're doing their thing. But I'm going to tell you something. I know that God is in the house. Amen. Live feed, I know that God is here and I know that God is right there where you're at. Amen. So let's go to God in prayer and ask God to move in our midst tonight. Dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, I want to thank you. Thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you've allowed us to come to worship and praise you. Father, I pray tonight that you'll move and minister in a mighty way. Touch the hearts and the lives of each one, those that are in-house, those that are on live feet alike. Father, I pray that you'll move and you'll minister in a way that only you can. You see, each heart and each life, you know how exactly to touch. And I'm expecting you to move in a mighty way. And Father, I thank you for everything that you've done and all that you're going to continue to do. It's all these things that we ask in Jesus' precious, holy, and righteous name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen and Amen. Would you give God a great hand clap of praise and let's worship tonight. Amen. I'm so thankful that we have a Savior who said He would never leave us or forsake us. And we can trust Him completely. I don't care what we're facing. He's right there with us. And we're going to sing about that tonight. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to Just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more.
nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me all around. He's offered every pain that's got a name. All the wealth I want. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Hallelujah. Yes, thank Praise you. you. Let's do that, do that second verse again. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You know, I think of this song, and this song is not finished unless you see Vestal Goodman standing up on that stage with that white handkerchief and praising God. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. I wouldn't take nothing for the tears that I've shed. I wouldn't take nothing for all the trials and the troubles that I've went through. I surrender to God tonight. Amen. Sing that second verse again. I had a lot of heartache, met a lot of grief and woe. Oh, and when I would stumble, then I would humble down. And then I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Though the devil takes me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name. All the wealth I want and worthy fame. If I could still, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. I gotta make it to heaven somehow. Oh, the devil tempts me and he tries to turn me around. He's offered everything that's got a name, all the wealth I want, and worthy fame. If I could, still I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. If I could, still I wouldn't take. Nothing for my journey now. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a scripture as we were standing up here practicing tonight. And it simply reads in Hebrews 12, Therefore, since we are surrounded... I don't know if y'all felt that, but a wind just blew through here. <laughs> Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God aren't you glad tonight we have a risen savior aren't y'all must not be as happy as I am about that y'all must not be getting it like I do huh? aren't you glad we have a risen savior tonight that sits on the right hand side of God the father aren't you so glad that we have had ones that has gone on before us that has been a witness for us to know that we need to keep fighting the fight in just a few days it'll it's been COVID has made these last two years rough for a lot of people but in the next few days within less than a year I have lost a significant amount of people in my life but I have lost two people that was very very dear to me one would have been my stepmother 
if she would have still been alive. Darlene Isabel was her name, and she was such a mighty warrior of God. She was quiet, but when the Holy Spirit moved on her, you knew it was God because you saw it. You could see it just literally come like it would pour down on the top of her head, and you could see the anointing come upon her. She battled cancer for years. She had a lot, she had breast cancer that metastasized and it went into other parts of her body. She beat it several times and then it would come back. But she never blamed God. She always said, this too shall pass. That is a witness. That no matter what may come your way, you can say, this too shall pass. And then just a month ago, I had someone very dear who her family had adopted me as their daughter because they did not have a daughter. And I don't know why, Sister Deborah, but for some reason they said if we had a daughter, we would want her to be just like you. They just didn't know what they were getting themselves into. But at the age of 18, God placed me in that family, and we became very close. And she ran a race with faith that no matter what come her way, she kept on running that race. She never talked bad about anyone. If somebody started saying something to her about someone else, she would say, well, I'll pray for them. But she ran the race. Her son went to a public school, played on the football team, and everybody called her Mama Lita. And after school, he would come home, and there would be cars all in his driveway and when he would go inside, it would be some of the boys from the football team that had to come and see Mama Lita. Because she lived a life of love. And she let God shine out of her life many times. Now don't get me wrong, she could get stirred up, especially over politics. <laughs> but she always backed some of her stirrups with the Word of God. But she was one that ran her race to make sure that she finished like she was supposed to. And as we sung that song tonight, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. I wouldn't take nothing for that journey. And I can just think it was hard lost. But now I think how they're up in heaven and they're being able to do something we can't do. They're able to look upon the face of Jesus. They're able to see his glory. And it's that witness that they lived that we need to make sure that we don't take nothing for our journey. We need to make sure that we fight this fight of faith. We need to make sure that no matter what comes our way, that we hold on to the word of God and we hold on to the anointing. As I was getting ready for tonight, I began to look into a few things, and I asked Pastor, could I touch on a few things? And he said, sure, go for it. Just don't get too deep in it. <laughs> because, and you'll find out why when I start talking, because it can get very deep on this subject. We're coming up on Halloween. Or All Hallows' Eve, or All Saints' Day, whatever you want to call it. If it was just a day that could be fun for kids and adults to dress up and go get candy, then that would be all in great. But a lot of Christians have a hard time with this holiday, so to speak, because they believe it brings out evil spirits. Now I want you to listen, because I'm not telling you Halloween is bad. I'm not telling you Halloween is good. But I just want to talk to you and let you realize that the spirits don't only come out on Hallow's Eve. The spirits come out every day of the year. 
And Christians take too much time in wanting to ridicule about Halloween and Hallow's Eve that we forget we need to also remind people that those same spirits can come out any day of the year. Because just as the Father has the Holy Spirit, Satan has his demons and his imps that does his work. And he wants to do everything that he possibly can to get us turned around, as that song said tonight. He's tried to turn me around. He's tried to offer me everything that's got a name. All the wealth I want and worldly fame. I don't want no worldly fame. I don't want no wealth. All I want is the wealth. All I want of the fame is the fame from the Holy Spirit upon me. A lot of times we think that this worldly stuff would do us good. But the good is of the Spirit. Is of the Father. Amen. But in the earliest traditions, if we look of Halloween and we look at the Celtics, they are the first people that we actually have record of celebrating Halloween. But they would open the door, as they called it, the locked portal to the underworld so that the spirits could roam free. But then in the ninth century, Pope Gregory IV decide he was going to call it the feast of all saints and he was going to have it on november 1st making the 31st hallows eve and this was a time that christians were to honor the saints and they were to pray for the souls of their departed ones did you catch that pray for the souls of their departed ones i hate to burst people's bones tonight if you do this but if your loved one has already went on it ain't doing you no good to pray because it doesn't do you any good to pray for the one that is alive if they do not accept Jesus as their personal savior you can pray and you can pray and you can pray and God tells us that our household shall be saved and we're going to hold on to that promise but if they don't accept Jesus as their personal Savior, when they die, it's over and done with. You cannot pray them from hell into heaven. But unfortunately, this was what they thought they could do. They thought that they could pray their lost ones into heaven. You can't do that. But whatever your belief may be, Whatever it may be on Halloween. I've had preachers call me on Hallow's Eve and tell me, start praying. Start praying right now because the witch and the warlocks, they are big right now. But I, they are no bigger right now on Halloween night as they are on any other night. Because we've got to realize there's nothing for us to be scared of. Because we have the Lord, our Savior, who when he ascended into heaven, he came down with the Holy Spirit that they would be our comforter. He also gave us an armor that we would be able to fight the good fight. Amen? We need to remember that no matter what, evil is always among us. Whether it's through a leader or whether it's through a single person or an industry or even a political party. I'm not naming no names. But there's plenty of demons in the, the Capitol right now. But don't get me wrong. There's also... And it's time we realize and open our eyes that there is evil spirits among us and we have to fight the good fight of faith. Not run the other way when they walk through the doors of the church.
Because I want to tell you, even though they may possess somebody, that person inside wants freedom. That person inside wants to be set free. And instead of us running the other way, you better make sure you're tied up, tangled all up in Jesus. Because when you go against that demon, he'll look at you and he'll say, Jesus, I know, but who are you? So you better make sure that you have Jesus on the inside. But as there is plenty people that I can think of as we look through history and one that I immediately think about that allowed Satan to grab a hold of him and he fight and he torture and he killed God's chosen people was Hitler. A lot of people in that time thought he was the Antichrist. But he tortured God's chosen people. And then I continue to think on and I think of Madeline O'Hare. She allowed God, I mean she allowed Satan, excuse me, she allowed Satan to use her to take prayer out of school. One woman, one woman stood up against the United States of America and against the school districts and took prayer out of school. Don't tell me that one person can't change something. She took prayer out of school. She even allowed Satan to use her to the point that when she took the prayer, he was able to start attacking our young people at a younger age because they didn't have that prayer in school where they might not have it at home. Now they didn't have it at school, so they didn't have nothing to help them to introduce them to God. So now Satan has more of an opportunity to get to the children at a younger age. Church, we better wake up. And this was in the 60s. This is 2021. We better wake up. She was a strong atheist. She didn't believe in God at all. She once made a statement. I love a good fight. I guess fighting and I, God knows I'm reading what she says. Because I'm going to tell you, it scares me to say it. I love a good fight. I guess fighting God and God's spokesman is sort of the ultimate, isn't it? But here's the question I want to ask, and I ask all atheists. If you think that God is not real, then why are you wasting your breath? Why are you wasting your time to fight something that you say is not real? You know why? Because the devil that rules you knows Also, that there is a God. The devil that rules you knows that he's going to lose one day. The devil that rules you knows he has no authority. And it's time, church, that we take the authority that God has invested in us. And it's time we stand up as that one woman who was an atheist and who fought against God. If she didn't have God on her side, and she took, somebody needs to get with me. If she didn't have God on her side and she fought a whole United States of America a school system then tell me what somebody with God on their side could do in our world today tell me what somebody with the anointing of the Holy Spirit could do if they stood up against somebody that said God is not real I don't know how many is on TikTok or if you even know what it is but there's for some of you that might not know It's a social media account that short videos go by. Some of them are horrible. You got to go by real quick. (laughs) But I've got rid of most of those now. Most of them comes through are either cooking or something about God or pets. I like laughing at pets. But anyway, there's one that's going on right now. And it's an atheist driving in his car. And rain is coming down hard. You can hear it hitting the windshield. And he says, there is no God. I know there's no God. And to prove to you people that think there is a God, 
if there is a God, lightning will strike in one, two, three, now. And as soon as he said now, lightning struck and lit up his whole car. And he goes, oh, wow. That's a little concerning. Why is it concerning? Because you just found out <laughs> there is a king of kings and lord of lords. You've just found out what you've tried to say is not real. Israel, it's time we stand up because whether we can see them or not, I can see them when I look at Sister Deborah. I can see them when I look at Sister Francis. I can see them when I look at myself because I shouldn't be here. I can and when I look at daddy who should have died when he was 15 years old by cancer but if he wasn't here I wouldn't be here there is a God and we need to realize that he is a God who cares he is a God who loves and he is the God who gave us the armor so that we may can fight these evil spirits that come up against us she even tried to take out in God we trust on the American currency. She even fought to get under God taken out of the Pledge of Allegiance. But I wonder, in 1995, when her, her youngest son, and her granddaughter were kidnapped and brutally murdered, I wonder if she called out on the name of God then. The man who killed them did not even tell the authorities until 2001 where they could find the bodies. And when they found the bodies in 2001, they would not even release the details because it was such a brutality of a murder that had taken place. You cannot fight God. You cannot say that God is not real. You cannot say that God has no power. Because I'm going to tell you, when you do that, you're trying God. And God will show you his power. Someone asked Billy Graham's daughter, who Billy Graham himself said is the best preacher in the family. Someone asked her after the 9-11 tax on Good Morning America when everybody all of a sudden started turning to God. Do you still believe God cares? Why would God allow something like this to happen? And I think, I pray that I wouldn't have had to but I think I might have had to sit there just for a minute and to think what my answer would have been so that I could answer it in the right way seeing I was on national TV. But she did not. Immediately, the words began to flow out of her mouth and she said, because we turned our backs on God. We pushed God out. We told God to get out of our schools. Therefore, we got them out of our homes. Therefore, we got them off of TV. We tried to get rid of God. So why should we expect God to come to our rescue? But I want to tell you something tonight. <laughs> as long as you are saved and you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have someone to come to your rescue. Amen? You have a way out. But even through all of that witness in Madeline O'Hare's household, even though she said there was no God, her oldest son, William, <laughs> she had went in 1960 and she had took prayer out of his school. He was the reason she went to the schoolhouse and got prayer out because she did not want him praying. No matter what she done, it doesn't matter what your mama, I want somebody to listen to me right now. It doesn't matter what your mama and what your daddy has done. You have to stand before God yourself. 
And it doesn't matter that your mama might have been the most hatedest woman on the world because that is a book. It's called The Most Hated Woman of the World that is about Madeline O'Hare. It doesn't matter if God knew you before you were formed in your mama's womb and knew the anointing and knew the call that he had on your life. It don't matter that your mama's the biggest atheist on the planet because there was a nugget placed in you when you went to school before your mama got the prayer out that you learned how to pray to God. And even though your mama might have won that battle and got it out of the schoolhouse, you still had those few prayers that you learned while you was in the schoolhouse. You still heard of a man called Jesus. You still heard that there was a way to freedom. You still heard that there was love unthinkable. You still heard that there was joy on the other side. And you still knew that I have someone I can turn to. And no matter what his mama done, he became an evangelist to, to the world, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Y'all must not have got out of that what I got out of it. <laughs> she served Satan. To me, all sin's greater. All sin's the same, but there's no sin greater than sinning against the Holy Ghost. And to me, when she denied Jesus, when she denied God, she was sinning against the Holy Ghost. Therefore, that was a sin that she might as well realize she had done stepped into the uttermost part of hell. But her seeds were, her son grabbed a hold of a revelation that there is a man called Jesus. And no matter about all this evil that is in the world right now, God has equipped us. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18 says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. <laughs> Somebody needs to stand tonight. Stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth <laughs> and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet. Having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints now if I stopped right there we could say we had been in church tonight because I just let you know how to overcome the enemy by reading you the word. I could stop right there. But the armor of God reminds us of a spiritual battle that we must fight. But that God gave us protection so that we could fight it. He gave us the belt of truth. Now that covers your loins. It covers the part that the enemy does everything in his power to deceive you with. Now I want you to follow me. We need to know the truth. We need to know who we are. We need, and I know some of you is going to turn up your heads, but this is the way the Holy Spirit led me. We need the freedom to know our sexuality. Now I'm not talking. Uh -huh. about pronouns 
I'm not talking she, her, he, him, they, them. Oh, and by the way, new ones come out, I think, about a month ago. At least it's the first time I heard about it. There's a new pronoun out. <laughs> Sister Deborah, it's, we are deems and demons. And these two young girls was saying that their pronoun, you are to now refer to them as demons. No, you're going to be referred to as a young lady that hated. And may the blessings of God overshadow you. Now, I'm going to say this. Christians have not showed love to the ones that get a little confused. We unfortunately have showed hatred instead. But we need to show them love because this is where the enemy comes in to confuse. This is where the enemy comes in and he tries to get you all messed up in your mind of you thinking who you are when you need to realize the only way to find yourself, the only true answer is in Jesus. The only true way is in the blood of Jesus. Some of you need to help me tonight. The only way is in the blood. We don't need to hate them for their confusion, but we need to show them the love of Christ. And if there was anything that I would tell you as a statement of faith for the belt of truth, it would be to say, I am a child of God. I live in the light of truth and not in darkness. He who the Son sets free is free indeed, and I am free. He then gave us the breastplate of righteousness that covers our chest. That covers a very important part, a vital organ in our chest. Can somebody tell me what it is? Our heart. Did you know if something happens to that heart, you ain't going to live? Sorry. You're not going to live if that heart decides it's done and over with. You're gone. But he gave us a breastplate of righteousness so that when Satan tries to snare us every day with sinful pleasures, we can realize that righteousness saved us. We need the righteousness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Sometimes righteousness is looked upon as being haughty or being holier than thou. If you want to call me haughty, if you want to call me holier than thou, I'm sorry. But I'd rather be called haughty and I'd rather be called holier than thou than to split hell wide open. I'd rather know that I'm living the righteousness of God. If it's because you call me holier than thou, because I won't go to the bar with you, I'm sorry. Been there, done that. Got the t-shirt that shows that I sat on the curb begging God to let me throw it up so I'll never go back again. But guess what? Satan had a hold of me, and what did I do? I went back until I realized the only truth was in him. The only truth is in the Father. Because when you get to the bottom of that bottle, your problems are still there. When you get to the bottom of that bottle that you think all your answers lie in, your troubles are still there. If not, you got more troubles because you got a headache when you wake up the next morning. But if there was a statement of faith I'd tell you for righteousness, it would be I am righteous because the blood of Jesus he shed on Calvary was a perfect offering for me.
and it satisfied God. His blood met all the claims of justice. So I am righteous because Jesus made me righteous. He became my sin and I took my place in righteousness. So devil, you have no claim in my life for I am the righteousness of God. He then gave us gospel of peace that covers our feet. In Greek, that peace means oneness. That peace means wholeness. Sister Martha, I want to be whole in God. I want to be whole in His Spirit where there's nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken because I'm whole in the wholeness of the Spirit. What better way for the enemy to take you out than to take you off your feet? What better way for him to knock you for a loop? But Ephesians tells us over and over to stand and to stand firm. You can't stand firm unless you're on the rock. And it's time we get on the rock. Amen? But Satan has no authority when you stand in the gospel of peace. Because you see that gospel of peace, it takes away all of our worry. It takes away all of our sadness. And it's time we tell the devil, you are not taking my peace. You are not taking my joy. I'm standing in my authority and in my peace that Jesus has given me. And I'm staying in my place called there. If you step out of your place called there, you ain't doing nothing but allowing the enemy to rob you of your destiny. If I gave you a statement of faith for the gospel of peace, it is I am standing firm in your word. For your word said, it was a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. As I read and study your word, you will talk with me. Your Holy Spirit that lives within me will lead and guide my footsteps. I rebuke any confusion and I boldly declare your word and know that I will rest in the gospel of your peace. He then gave us a shield of faith. That shield to cover our body. Soldiers, when they had a shield, it was covered in animal skin. And before they would go and out to battle, they would take that shield and they would dip it in water. That way, when the arrows that was flaming would come towards them, it would hit that shield and they would be extinguished. It's time we dip ourselves in the water of the word so that when the enemy comes about us with darts, we can extinguish those darts. It's time we get into the word. Like Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. We need to keep the word going in our mind. The statement of faith I'd give you for this would be, I declare, Isaiah 54, 17. And this is my version. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and my righteousness is in him. It's time we realize who our righteousness is from. He then gave us a helmet of salvation. You see, this covers our mind. The battlefield of the mind is a real thing. I suffered from depression many years ago. And you can ask my daddy. I didn't even want to get up out of the bed. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to talk. I didn't want nothing but to die. Death seemed the best thing that could happen. Because everything that I thought my life was, was not. 
the calling that I had on my life. As this scripture says, every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment shall condemn. I had people at churches saying they caught me behind churches with another man. Not me. I had them saying I was laying hands on other children. Not me. And I would lay in bed and say, God, why is this happening? All I'm doing is trying to serve you. You showed me what my ministry is. But why is this happening? Because I was not yet in my place called there. And if you're not in your place called there, you will be ridiculed. You will be tried. But I'm going to tell you something. And some of you might already know this. Even when you're in your place called there, you will be ridiculed and you will be tried. But it's time you stand your faith and you stand your ground. And I did not get out of the depression until I got a hold of who I was in Christ. I am worthy. I am worthy because Jesus made me worthy. I am loved, whether it's by anyone on this earth or not, I am loved by Jesus because he died on a cross. He gave his life up for me. He took my sin so that I would not have to bear it. So whether anybody else loves me, I know Jesus loves me. Well, Amanda, you can't see him. No, I couldn't see him with the eye, but I could see him with the spiritual eye. And I saw the angels that he sent in my bedroom that night that said you are to carry the gospel around the world. You are to carry his word and you are supposed to set the captives free and heal the brokenhearted. You're supposed to let the lame walk and the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the lame to walk and the dumb to speak. And I laid there and said, how can I do this? I don't even want to get out of the bed. And he said, because he has set you free. And the moment that the angel spoke that to me, I literally changed that moment. You have to know who you are in Christ. And if you want to be set free, find out that you are worthy because he made you worthy. Not anyone else, but he made you worthy. And if there was anything that I would declare, it would be over and over, I would tell you, every morning to get up, if you fight the battle of the mind, to get up and say, I am worthy because you made me worthy. I am loved because you love me. I am whole because your peace makes me whole. It's time we stand and stand firm. Another thing we can say as I declare, I will not worry or fear. For God is faithful to me. He has never left me, nor has he forsaken me. He has always provided a way for me. He is my Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> I will trust him and I will never doubt his word for his Holy Spirit has made me an overcomer. He then gave us one other weapon that we could use. And that weapon was the sword of the Spirit. Now you may say, Sister Amanda, that's not what it means. No, it means the sword of the Spirit. This is the sword of the Spirit. But what I want you to see, because sometimes it takes us looking. What I want you to see is the sword of the Spirit has two edges. And it is sharp. And when the enemy comes up against you, this weapon is the strongest tool that God has given you. Because it not only will be your defense, 
but it will also be your offense. Because when the enemy comes up against you, just like Jesus gave us a great example, he stood up against Satan in the wilderness and three times Satan came to him and three times Satan tried to tempt him but Jesus said you cannot tempt me and he would quote scripture how many of us know the word enough that we would be able to quote the scripture and take the sword and cut those slew foot's head off how many of us could he gave us a weapon so that we could use and so that we could declare the statement of faith that I would tell you is Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So when I use the word of God, no evil shall come nigh my dwelling. It's time we find out who we are in Christ. It's time that we quit allowing a song that I know y'all know that I think is going to get played. Do we have sound? Well, I know y'all know who that is. <laughs> Some of you might anyway. Okay. Y'all seeing that, can somebody tell me what song is supposed to be playing with this? Who are you? Who, 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 who? There you go. A lot of times we get this song going on in our mind and we forget who we are. We let this song go over and over and over in our mind asking us, who are you? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Well, it's time we stand firm against the enemy and say, I am a child of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am a child that no matter what the enemy may bring up against me, I have the sword of the Spirit and I can fight the enemy. Come here, Stephanie, come here. You can say, well, he gave us the helmet. He gave us the breastplate of righteousness he gave us the sword but what's on our back we don't have nothing on our back yeah we do the holy spirit is standing against with us back to back come on now somebody ought to shout it on that one come on now somebody ought to ran the pews on that one the holy spirit is standing back to back god didn't need to give us anything to cover our back because we got the holy spirit that fights for us we got the holy spirit just as pastor said god said the battle is not yours but it's mine it's time we realize we got the holy spirit standing behind us so no matter what battle may come our way we we are victorious if there's anything I leave with you tonight it's to realize who you are you are worthy you are a child of God and no matter what battlefield of the mind may come your way I still fight the difference is I fight now with because I know who I am. So even though those thoughts may come in my mind, devil, <laughs> I'm worthy because God made me worthy. You have no authority over me because Jesus gave me the authority when he rose from the grave. You have no rule over my life because Jesus is my ruler. It's time we stand firm, and it's time we realize who we are in Christ.
if you all stand. Father, as we come to you right now, Father, as we come to you right now, Lord, I just ask you tonight, something was given that would cause the people to think tonight. Something was given that would start stirring something up in the innermost being for them to realize who they are tonight in you. Father, I ask you right now that you would show up and show out in a mighty way. I ask you right now that the depression and the oppression that is seated in the lap of some of these people tonight would be ran out of this building. Father, I don't normally do this, but you're leading me to do it right now. So I'm obeying your word. If you're here tonight and you're tired of fighting that battle, I plead with you tonight to come to this altar for the anointing. The waters are stirred tonight with His anointing. If you're ready to step in the wholeness of Him, I plead with you to come tonight. If you're watching us and this is you, text the number and we'll be glad to have someone pray with you for the answer is only in him wash my hands for there's nothing else I can do all I can do is pray that your spirit will be strong with them as they go home because they can even receive the victory at home in Jesus name the thing about it is is we don't We don't know what the next battle is going to be in our lives. We don't know what is going to be right around the corner. But we know that God is greater in us than that that's in the world. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you, Sister Amanda, for bringing the word tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you to those that are on our live feed. Thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing here at Coosa Valley. Live feed, thank you so much. May God bless you. Join us back Sunday school Sunday morning at 945. Worship at 11. May God bless you. Live feed.